money didn't exist, things would be so much better, wouldn't you think? Like, everyone would act differently. There's no money whatsoever. You got these corporations that give you minimum wage, no pension, no retirement, no vacation, no sick pay. The Wall Street protesters have all sorts of grand plans. Education should be free. Healthcare should be free. The minimum wage should be raised to $20 an hour. I wish the protesters knew basic economics, and so does economist Josh Barrow. So, Josh, let me take them one at a time. The minimum wage should be higher. It's now $7.25. It should be 20 bucks. Well, I mean, you're not going to get employers to hire people for more money than they're actually producing. At well, the they'll have to. It's the law. Well, no, they just, those jobs won't exist. The stuff won't get done. Now, you know, you move it around on the margins, $7 to $8 doesn't look like it matters that much based on the empirical research. But you, you get up somewhere around 20 and yeah, you're going to drive unemployment up through the roof. College should be free. Well, I, I, I actually think this is really funny because you see these protesters, they're upset. They, you know, they spent all this money on education that's not useful for them. They're not finding the jobs they thought they, should get, they could get. Now, if you make education free, people will be even less discretionary about what they consume in education, what they go get degrees in, and our education sector will be even more wasteful than it is today. We actually need people to think harder about what degrees they get. A lot of these people were promised jobs. You go to the school and you'll get a great job. Well, it depends what you get a degree in. Overall, the unemployment rate for people with college degrees or higher in America is only 4.3%. So in general, you should be able to find so work. So really low compared to the 9% right. average for everybody. Right. And the people who are really struggling are people with only a high school degree or even without a high school diploma. But most of these protesters, they, tend, they seem to tend to be college educated. And in most cases, you should be able to find work if you're college educated. And I, I'm suspicious of the ones who say we can't find anything because we just call around on New York Times and Monster.com uh, checking two American cities. Lincoln, Nebraska, we found 54 postings. About half of them were entry level. In Columbia, South Carolina, 68 postings. So there are jobs out there. Some people don't want to work at minimum wage or just above. Well, it, it, it depends what field you're in and what you're looking for jobs in. But for the most part, people with college educations are not finding the market that bad right now. It's not just the protesters who say they want, they want their debt forgiven. A Salon.com writer says the bottom 99% should see their debt forgiven, just wiped off the books to enrage the banks. I, I first read that piece, I kind of thought Alex Preen was joking when he wrote that, but I think he was serious. And, you know, it wouldn't enrage the banks, it would bankrupt the banks. The 99% obviously is nearly all of America. That's nearly all the consumer debt in America. If you forgive all that debt, the banks won't exist anymore and nobody will ever lend again. Uh, another point, aren't people right to be upset? The median income in America has fallen over the past 10 years. I, I think this is actually something that is a real and legitimate complaint from the protesters. Uh, you've seen a 10% decline in the American median income over the last four years. And when you look over a 30 or 40 year period, um, income gains have been very good at the top of the distribution, have been much weaker at lower levels of the distribution. So I think, you know, th this but, is why but, we need... But wait a sec. We're always talking about the poorest fifth. And can mm -hmm. we put this chart up? I think we have this. This shows, if you take a look at it, that even the poorest fifth, yes, it's gone down in the last 10 years, but the poorest fifth are 20% are richer than they were in 1967 and still richer than they were in 94. Yeah, I think, you know, th there's been progress. Life is certainly better than it was 40 years ago, but I think people want a faster rate of progress than they've seen. Um, and I think but that's why we... we're not entitled to progress. No, we're... We well, hope but, for it, but to right. say... We're going to protest, we're going to have riots because we're being cheated. Well, it's, I think they're wrong to describe it as being cheated. But I think, you know, the economy has been terrible for three years. There have been a lot of government policy errors that have led to that. There were a lot of mistakes in the private sector, especially in the, in the lead up to the collapse, that have, have impoverished America relative to where we could be. And I think it makes sense for people to be upset. They're asking for some of the wrong things. But I, th I think this is a reasonable thing to complain about. Well, they definitely are asking for some of the wrong things. Let's, let's play another clip from the protest a couple points somebody wanted to make. We should have bases on the moon by now, on Mars by now. What happened with that? I thought we were going to space. Why don't we have a solar paneled pipe across the United States? I don't want to see the 1% making all the money. 
I'll let you react to that. Well, I think this reflects what's going on down on Wall Street. It's a, it's a really diverse group. A lot of these people are kind of crazy. Um, they're not all quite so crazy as that. But I think, you know, the, they, they're, they're, they understand that they're upset. They don't really know what they want. And I think it's a problem for them as a movement. Um, and I think it reflects, a, in part, a, a level of economic illiteracy, that they don't know what can be done to fix these problems. But they are right that 1% of the people do have a lot of the money. That, that is true, but I, uh, they accumulate that money by creating wealth and by, cr by creating growth in the economy. So I think that this focus on, you know, other people have these things and we want those, I think is, is counterproductive. I do think it's reasonable. But why? Some of us have a lot. In, in the top 1% in terms of assets has 35% of the wealth of the country. I can see why people say, give me some. Well, it's the, the, any country, if you look at wealth distributions around the world, they don't look all that different from in the U.S. Because what happens is people engage in productive enterprises, they invent things, they build companies, and that generates wealth, and they accumulate that wealth. And if you want to stop that from happening, you have to stop people from doing those productive things. And Steve Jobs did make a phenomenal amount of money for himself, billions of dollars. But he also created a $3 billion company. That's creating wealth for everybody. Right, and I think it's interesting how the protesters, you know, the, there were moments of silence down on Wall Street for Steve Jobs' death, and they're all down there using Apple products. And I think, you know, their, their lives were enriched by his creation of Apple, e even as Steve Jobs ended up with over $6 billion at the time of his death. Tax the rich. I don't want to see the 1% making all the money. The Wall Street protesters complain that 1% of the people control most of the wealth in America. That's why many protesters chant, we are the 99%. Some also created a photo blog titled, we're the 99%. And every day they add pictures of people holding notes saying things like, my brother was laid off from his job. I am the 99%. I suffer from fibromyalgia and I can't get a decent job. I am the 99%. The blog's gotten plenty of coverage from the mainstream media. But now a rebuttal blog has popped up. It started when Eric Erickson of the conservative website redstate.com posted this picture of himself on his website holding a note that says, I work three jobs. I have a house I can't sell. But I don't blame Wall Street. Suck it up, you whiners. I'm the 53% subsidizing you so you can hang out on Wall Street and complain. Mike Wilson got a kick out of that post and decided to organize a blog to counter the 99% blog. His is titled, We're the 53%. So, Mike, what's the 53% mean? Well, John, the 53% are the, uh, the percentage of Americans who actually pay federal income taxes in this country. A lot of people don't realize that almost half of this country doesn't actually contribute to that pool. And so what you have on the sort of the 99 is you've got a lot of people who are, are saying, um, look, I went to school, I borrowed $100,000, and now I have to work three jobs to, to make ends meet. Well, guess what? That's America. So what the people who are posting pictures not on... not just America, that's life around life the world. It's life around the world. It's probably easier in America. Much easier. But uh, here, here in America, you know, the 53% the are, are, are the people who uh, make enough money and work hard enough so that they do contribute. Uh, we have a very progressive tax system, um, and, and, and a lot of people who make <clears throat> the more money that you make, the more you pay. So 53 percent, it's almost, it's going down, right? We're going to get to a point where more people don't pay any federal income tax. Right, and then we're in trouble, I guess. But let me push back, because they pay payroll taxes, they pay sales taxes. Sure. And if you add those together, that's about equal to the income tax. Everybody's, we're all well, saying it, they don't pay income tax. And I understand that, but wouldn't it be great if we all had some skin in the game when it came to, I mean, we, we, we hear uh, the, the liberals and Democrats talk all the time about everybody, they need to have some skin in the game. They need to pay their fair share. Well, to me, fair would be a nice flat tax. That's just one guy's opinion, but um, everybody should have some skin in the game. Everybody pays Social Security tax and Medicare, all that stuff. How about, how about we all pay an, uh, an equal share of... Uh, of income tax as well. All right, so you start the blog and sure. it catches on? It does, and it started very innocently. We've been called an organization and a group and all these things. The truth is it was three guys that were really bored at three o'clock in the morning. I was up, I own my own business, uh, edit video and film, and I was up uh, working and, and uh, Eric posted his picture, another friend of ours posted one, I posted one, and we decided, hey, why don't we, why don't we put up a blog? By the next morning, uh, tons and tons of pictures started showing up on Twitter, so we just started posting them. Grow, grew totally organic. There's no big money behind it. And a lot of it's in response to these protests. I and, it's, and it is. And even more than that, it's not even really about the taxes. What it's about, John, is people having the opportunity to say, look, 
life is tough sometimes. And you do have to work those three jobs to pay that back. It, it, maybe it, it, you don't think the that it's The protesters say, but I can't work three jobs, or people are sick. Well, these sick. are the people holding up the sign saying, I did, and I made it. And look, and I failed at three different businesses that I tried, and I lost it. Look, John, a few years ago, went through a divorce, lost everything, failed miserably. I've been rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding over the course of the last few years. My faith in America and in, that, and in this sort of movement doesn't come just sort of blindly. I've lived it. Uh, there was a time when there was no hamburger in the hamburger helper. It was just helper, right? So I know what it's like to be down and to have to work all those jobs you don't want to work and do things that you don't want to do. Um, and so do the rest of these people. The 53 are the people who are saying, you can make it. And we believe in you. Start believing in yourself. Today, even poor people have clean water, TV sets, cars, and flush toilets. Poor people in America live as well as kings and queens used to live. Yet the protesters hate the capitalism that makes that possible. They call rich people robber barons. Years ago, the term was used by American newspapers to smear tycoons like Cornelius Vanderbilt and John D. Rockefeller. But the media then were clueless, too. Vanderbilt and Rockefeller were neither robbers nor barons. They weren't barons because they weren't royalty, and they weren't born rich. They were born poor. They weren't robbers because they didn't steal. They earned money by pleasing people. Vanderbilt invented ways to make travel cheaper. He used bigger ships, faster ships, and served food on board. People liked that, and the extra customers he attracted allowed him to lower costs. He cut the New York Hartford fare from $8 to $1. That helped people. Rockefeller was called a monopolist, but he wasn't. He had 150 competitors, including big ones, Texaco and Gulf. No one was ever forced to buy his oil. Rockefeller got rich by finding cheaper ways to get oil to the pump. His competitors called him a robber because he stole their business by lowering prices. His lower prices made life better for poor people. Poor people used to go to bed when it got dark, but thanks to Rockefeller, they could suddenly afford fuel for lanterns so they could stay up and read at night. Rockefeller's greed may have even saved the whales because when he lowered the price of kerosene and gasoline, he eliminated the need for whale oil. The mass slaughter of whales suddenly stopped. Bet your kids won't read, Rockefeller saved the whales in their environmental studies class. Protesters are ignorant when it comes to economics. The public is ignorant. We who understand the benefits of free enterprise need to work harder to explain economics to people. Well, we'll keep trying to do that here because free enterprise is what gives people the power to prosper.